Oke. Okay. Oke. Alright, it's seven o'clock. Let's start with prayer. Father, we just come before you tonight. We thank you for who you are. You, you're our Father, and we thank you. We love you, and we want to learn more about you. So, as we go over the lesson tonight, have your way with us. Open up our minds that we understand the scriptures and how to apply the truth of your word in our lives. And so be it. So be it. Yes. <laughs> All right, all right. Let me get my screens up here. That's the right one. I can share. And here we go. No, that's not the right one. It's more this one. Right, that one. All right. All right, so um, welcome, welcome, everyone. This is the Royal Rulers in Training. This is um, Thursday night, so uh, be ready to have your, your pen, your paper, take some notes, ready to participate. And um, so today I'm gonna be asking questions about what you learned, so take some notes, okay? Uh, you can use the chat or you can use, let me see. Yeah, your notebook and your pen and paper, right. All right, I see that line in your chat. All right, use your chat for notes if you need to. All right, let's get ready to move on tonight. Tonight, I wanted to share something I forgot to share last night. I'm gonna start with that. <clears throat> and that is on the smiling versus the frown. Uh, the, uh, I went to look that up to see how is, did it mean anything? So let me start with that while the people may be trying to get on. And it says, oh, put your glasses on. <laughs> it says, when you were a kid, you may have told that, you may have been told that it takes fewer muscles to smile than it does to frown. And that, though it is, though it's nice, this a nice sentiment, this isn't strictly true. The mechanics behind smiling and frowning muscles are a little more are a little more complicated than that. So the reality of smiling versus frowning, the interconnectedness of human facial muscles really make a difference. I mean, make make it difficult if you if it's not uh, outright. Let me see. Let me move these pictures up my way so I can see. If it's not outright uh, impossible to determine exactly how many muscles are used when smiling or frowning, it is known that smiling generally exercise the upper cheek, which is uh, take note of what, of what I'm saying, and the eyes are more, while frowning is usually situated more around the lower mouth and your chin. There are many mutual muscles that are used throughout both smiling and frowning. And the amount of effort that is used when, when doing so generally relates to the severity of the expression rather than the, uh, the expression itself. So in general, most people report that the effort relates to smiling or frowning tends to feel related to whether or not they are truly experiencing that emotion. That's an important note right there. So in other words, forcing an expression can feel like more work. There you go. So rather than smiling or frowning, regardless of the expression, but that doesn't mean that there are, there, that there aren't some significant difference between the two. So, I was just looking up to see if it was um, when I said, uh, what was that last week? When we said that it takes more um, work to, to frown than to do to smile. 
So the um, I'm gonna read the next one. It says the consequences of smiling versus frowning. Here they go. Listen to this. This is important too. Smiling tends to create smile lines. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, around the corner of the mouth. Um, Miss Jackson. Yes. Um, Kiana, my sister is waiting in the waiting room. Oh, she's in the waiting room. Okay, I didn't see that. Waiting room. Okay. Hey, Kiana. <laughs> hey, Kiana. It says three has joined, and now we have four. Right. Here we go. You can see your application. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Kiana. How are you? Doing good. I was okay. just waiting. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I was uh, just, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about the uh the frown and the smile that I forgot to do yesterday. So this, uh, okay. I'm on the second paragraph. It says smiling tends to create smile lines mm -hmm. around the corner of the mouth and laugh lines around the corner of the eyes. Meanwhile, frowning tends to create wrinkles between the eyes and at the edge of the mouth. Well, that's not mm. good. <laughs> so in a downturn angle, so thus those who smile more frequently and those who frown more frequently may very well have their expression etched permanently across their face with time. That, that's not good. Nineteen eighty seven. What am I hearing? I was only Who's there? That was it, you? Sounded, it, it sounded like it was from I don't know, Line now. I don't know if there's right, line now. That means you're playing the game while you're doing this. <clears throat> there was an ad when I was trying to get to my notes. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, ads happen all the time. Yeah. yeah, I have something on my computer at the moment. I can't fix it. Okay. What? You can't fix the uh, chat? It's a, it's a virus. Oh. So ads crop up. I have to go get my ad blocked. Okay. I'm glad you knew about all that. <laughs> all right. So you see what happens when you frown too much. You can actually get those wrinkles and stuff etched in your in your uh, face over time. And same thing with smiling, right? <laughs> For those who smile more frequently and those who frown more frequently may very well have their expression etched firmly across their face with time. And that's not all. Psych psych psychological studies have often found that those who smile with all will also begin to feel happier even if there are if, if there are no other changes to their situation or environment, those who smile also seem more approachable. Yeah, we talked about approachable yesterday. They seem more approachable and contribute to the happiness of those around them. Isn't that awesome, right there? That's contagious. <laughs> so thus. A bright gleaming smile is something that improves the lives of both its owner and those they care about. Now I'm gonna read the last one. Though smiling may not necessarily take few muscles than frowning, which we would we had a question about that. It may not necessarily take fewer muscles than frowning, okay? Smiling still takes less of, of a toll on your body and your mental health. Yeah, that's powerful to know, right? There are many physical and psychological benefits to smiling. Smiling elevates your mood. Oh, that's nice to know, right? And, and it's contagious too. So if somebody's not smiling or they're in a bad mood and you come up smiling, somebody said about my, something about my smiling the day I went out. And the lady, she said, can you lower your mind, your mask? I was in the bank. She said, can you lower your mask? <clears throat> and um, so I could see your face. And so I lowered my mask and I smiled. And she said, oh, that's that's a pretty smile. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> she said, by the way, she was doing my work for me. She said, by the way. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> smiling. So it's, it was a toll on the body and mental health. See what smiling does? It, it's take less of a toll 
on your body and your mental health. There are many physical and psychological benefits to smiling. Smiling elevates your mood. It decreases your stress muscles. It relaxes those around you. And that's what we want to do when, when we're out um, and intermingle with people. You want to relax those around you. Remember we said smiling, what it does? It breaks down what? Anybody remember what it breaks down? The walls. Yeah, I was going to say walls. <laughs> yes, it breaks down walls. So it, it relaxes those around you and even makes you more attractive to others. It brightens someone's day by flashing your pearly whites. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Just wanted to share that with y'all. I forgot to share it yesterday. And this part right here too, and then we're gonna move on. And it says smiling versus frowning. When you were a kid, I think I read that already. I think I just put it on another piece of paper. Let me read it again. When you were, when you were a kid, you may have been told that it takes fewer muscles to smile than it does to frown. Though it is nice sentiment, this isn't strictly true. That's what I want to get to. So the mechanics behind smiling and frowning muscles are a little more complicated than that. All right, now we got that stuff. <clears throat> so don't forget, y'all, we smile. What are we doing? We're looking, we're smiling. We're looking in the, the uh, windows of, of people's uh, souls, which is the lamp of their, of their body. And we're um, smiling, which breaks down walls. And um, we're saying hi this week, okay? When we come back, we're saying hi. We're doing all three of them systematically. And so once you get that down pack, it's like you don't even, it's like tying your shoes or riding a bike and you know, you just automatically just get up and do it, you know? It just happens because it's part of your lifestyle. All right, let's move on here. Let's move on. So we talked about that already. So let's get started with, uh, somebody read the first poster. Right now, I want to get you to read the first poster. You hear me, Lonnie? You with me, Lonnie? Yeah, what about the first poster? Read it, read it for me, please. Okay. One must, must be open to receiving God's word and the enlightenment of this holy spirit Thank you. this is what i mean to have ears to hear all right right thank you honey so you got to be open to receive god's word a lot of people are not open and the light the receiving god's word and the enlightenment of the holy spirit um this is what it means to hear have ears to hear yes and somebody read the other side God's world is God's thoughts. Right, God's word is God's thoughts. So you got to be open to receive God's word, which is to receive God's thoughts and the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. So when you receive the word, you're receiving God's thoughts. Got that? Cool. All right, let's go on. Let's read some more. Tonight, we're going to be talking basically about being one with him, okay? <clears throat> and uh, somebody read the, can you read that, Kiana, in the pink? Mm -hmm. In other words, let this, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I, now, I'm wondering if, I don't think that's Philippians. Is that Phil? Maybe you need to read the top where her head is at. Her hair. Because I'm trying to figure out what type of chapter that is. Oh, that's Philippians. Oh, Philippians. Okay. Philippians 2 5. I probably okay. need to read the top part where her hair is. So it's because it's saying in other words. Okay. So let's see. I just got to put this up on Zoom for a moment. Okay. Zoom it in. Have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's probably the same as the, the one in the bottom too. <laughs> right, and it's just and it's saying in other words. Mm -hmm. So we, that's what we're supposed to have the same mind as Jesus Christ. Uh, 
Second Corinthians 10, 5. Somebody read that top box, Lonnie. You with me, Lonnie? The top box? Yeah, it's a box over here in the corner. It's the gold. Oh, bringing into the captivity. Wait a minute. Take your time. Go slow. Bringing into captivity. Even though... Every... Every thought, thought. thought to the... Obsidian. Obedience. Obedience of Christ. To so breathe it again. Bringing it to the capital. To the capital Cap of, captivity. Captivity. Every thought to obedience of Christ. Right. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so that excuse me. <clears throat> that's what Second Corinthians ten five says. So we want we have in the mind of Christ. So we have to bring into captivity. There's going to be some thoughts to come at you that is not the mind of Christ. So you got to bring it into captivity. Um, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now I'm going to read here. It says, bring your mind in alignment with God. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Saying the same thing. Can you read that, Kiana, underneath? Okay, it's in the gold underneath, right? Right. Right. Bring bring your your mind in alignment with God. Bring every thought captive to the, obedi the obedience of Christ. So that's Second Corinthians ten and uh, ten five. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to keep reading? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and make God God Lord of your thought of your thought life, renewing your mind. Learning how to bring your feelings and sen senses under the governmental authority of the spir spiritual hope of God in you. Right. So when you're learning to bring, thank you, Kim. When you're learning to bring your feelings and your senses under, we've been talking about feelings and senses as discernment, right? So you got to, as you renew your mind, you're going to start learning how to bring them feelings and senses under the governmental authority of the Holy Spirit. You can, Brother Thomas, uh, of the spiritual hope of God that's in, where is he at? The hope of God. I'm, I'm reading down the bottom there. I ain't read the last word. Where is he at? Where is that at hope of God at? Anybody can ask. Hey, Brother Thomas. Hello. Hi. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Great. Sorry, I, sorry I, had, I delayed a little, so sorry. That's all right. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. You're welcome. So it says we're learning how to bring your feelings and senses under the governmental authority of the spirit, spiritual hope of God where? Hmm. Uh, in you. In you, yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's in you. The hope of glory is in you. All right. So we got to bring those thoughts into cavity. So when we discern and stuff, like when we are uh, out there, uh, you know, looking in people's eyes and the windows of their soul and all those things, you have to bring um, your feelings and senses under the government authority of the spiritual hope of God in you. All right. So we're talking about being one with him, okay? The power of one. In John 17, 22, this is another one that talks about the power of you being one with God. And um, somebody can read that for me, please. Okay, so I read. Right. And, and the glory which you give me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are. Yes. So Jesus, this was Jesus. This is the, we call it the Lord's Prayer. This is the real Lord's Prayer right here. Y'all ought to read that chapter sometime and see what, uh, it's not just uh, our Father which art in heaven, how it would be thy name, thy kingdom come. He's, Jesus was, uh, uh, the, the, this is the Lord's Prayer to the Father. Okay. So, in the glory which he gave me, he, Jesus was saying, in the glory which you gave me, he talking to the Father. I have, he said, I have given it to them. 
talking about his disciples, those who believe on him, that they may be one just as we are one. So don't let nobody tell you different. It's right there in the word that we are one with the Father, just as, as Jesus is, okay? The power of one. So when you're out doing all, learning all your senses and exercising your senses, remember, you are one with the Father. Got that? Somebody read that scripture right there. Right now, come on, read. <clears throat> come on, read, Lonnie. Yeah, what? Read the one with the girl at. He who, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Got that? I mean, it's clear. First Corinthians 6, 17, telling you that you are one with him. You're joint with the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> he who is joint to the Lord. What's that scripture? Um, John, John 1, 12. And when it talks about as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of God even to them that believe. So one of the things I thought about when I was doing this, I would say, well, one thing I did not see Jesus doing, and I want y'all to think, you know, on your thinking caps here, you, we did not see Jesus nowhere in the Bible giving um, a sinner's prayer. Think about it. Where, wherever he taught at, wherever he went at, I did not see him. Anybody wanted, <laughs> I didn't even see none of that, okay? So we got to start thinking and seeing things as the word of God is. He is not giving sinner prayer. Matter of fact, that was, that was made up, all right? Here is what Jesus said in John, I don't have it up here with me, but in John 1, verses 12, and 13, this is what it says. If you have your Bible, you can too. So you can, you know, make sure I'm saying the right thing. John 1, verse 12. And, and I like to read 12 and 13 because they go together. And it says, but as many as receive him, to them gave the, he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So <clears throat> God will let, God, he, he made you, right? So he know when you received him. He know when you believed on him. So we don't need uh, a sinner's prayer to know all that. It's in the spirit realm. All the other stuff is outside, so I don't know. Other people can see it, or that's how they were taught, and, they, and that's why we were all taught. So I'm um, just saying, just, Jesus just preached the word, and people believed and received, and received and believed, okay? <laughs> And that's how it was. And the spirit, God knows because he made us. He knows when you do it. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you don't see me doing that. I used to do that when I ain't know no better. And when I know better, I stopped. Okay? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so here on Romans 6, 4, and 6, there's another thing that talks about you being one with him. Um, anybody care to read that, those two verses? And we're talking about the oneness, the power of oneness that we, you know, God is not up there and, you know, we're looking for God up in the sky. He already told you that you're one with him. All right. Okay. Is it the one is, is Romans 6 to 4 to 6? Yeah. Okay. We were therefore buried with him through the baptism into death, in order that just 
as Christ was raised from the dead. Through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Awesome. Thank or, you. Go ahead. Mean, Go ahead. Or if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly <laughs> also be united with him in resurrection like his. Go ahead, V6. Okay. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away that we should not no longer be slaves to sin. Yes, that's right. And while you were reading, the scripture came up of uh, is it First Corinthians five seventeen? It says, <laughs> "Excuse me, this cool gotta go." <laughs> five seventeen, and it says, "Therefore, <laughs> if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away." Behold, all things have become new. So, you're in Christ, Christ in you. You joint with him. You are one spirit. You are one with the Father. Okay, I want y'all to see how all this is. Now, when he was buried in baptism, that's why they say, um, um, the old way they say, uh, it says, do you accept the Lord as your your Lord and Savior? And um, they do not say, that he was um, the part where he was risen. Um, and they don't say that part. <clears throat> Romans 6, do you accept the Lord uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And people say yes. That's what we said, yes. And it doesn't say about just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may be live a new life. So when Christ was raised from the dead, so would you. So. If you, if you were buried with him into baptism unto death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, you too may live a new life. So I want you to think about it. You were buried, crucified, and rose again. So as Christ is, so are you. Y'all got that? So as Christ is, so are you. So you already been risen. You were buried. Everything was done on the cross when Jesus did it. Everything, even the healing and all that stuff. And it talks about in Isaiah 53, 3 to 5, about how he he, he, he was scorned and, and whipped for us our iniquities. And, and at the end of that, it says, and you were made whole and you were healed by his stripes. So all that was done at the cross, all right? So it's important that we get that because a lot of people leave that part out that you were healed by his stripes at the cross. So if Jesus did all that on the cross back then and everybody believe right now that they're saved because they believe what he did. So why don't we believe that we are healed by his stripes? All of it was done at the same time. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you were in the united in his death like his. You will certainly be united with him in, in resurrection like his. So when he was raised, everybody that bleeds on him, that he already did everything already. He paid the penalty. All right. So let me move on to the next one. So <clears throat> you are not your own, for you were brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And this is another one that tells you about your oneness with him. Somebody want to read the one in the purple? <laughs> Not everybody at the same time. <laughs> okay, so the one in the purple, not the one with the cross? No, I read the cross already. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is from uh, Galatians 12, uh, 2. 
verse 20, this, the Amplified Version. Yes. I have been crucified with Christ. That is in him. I have shared his crucifixion. I have, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by, by faith, by a, ad, adhering to, a lying on, and, tr and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So <laughs> now we can't read these verses fast, right? Thank you, Kiana uh, uh, or Candy Swirl. Um, so you, you got to pause somewhere, okay? It says, I have been crucified with Christ. That is in him. I have shared his crucifixion, what we just said before. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And I always ask the question after reading that part and stop at the period, who is me? That's why you gotta just go, go slow and read and, and, and I ask the question, who is me? You can read it over again, it's right there in front of you. I just stopped at me. The son of God. Yes, you got it, brother Thomas. <laughs> you are the yeah. son of God. You are Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It says, I have, he says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Y'all got that? Yeah. And it goes with the other scripture that says, uh, Okay, I, I see it all the time. It says, as Christ is in this world, so are we. You are you just as Christ is, so are you in this world. All yeah. the things he did, we should be doing already. Okay. So yeah. the life that you now live, okay, now is in the body. This life that you live in, in the body, you live in by whose faith? God's faith. You're the son of God, right. Why? Because he loved us and he gave himself up for us. So it's already done. It's another scripture talks about he giving us everything we need for life and godliness. We do. We just got to believe what the word is saying. Remember when we started out, God's word is God's thought. So here we go. I went ahead of myself. Okay. Now, <laughs> um, now, can you read that one with the, the lion, and then read the other side too? We can't hear you. I am. Say it again. I am. The bottom part says Elohim. Halloween. All right, we didn't hear you. Let's read the other one. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Yes, exactly. So we already read that Jesus says, "I've given you the glory." And he said, "You." He's talking to the Father. I've given you have given me the glory, and I have given it to them that we are one. Got that? So nothing crazy and spooky going on here. We, we heard the word, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got the addresses, and for you to look them up, we already talked about you are God's in Psalms 82, 6, all right? He says, he, Jesus even told him, he told him, look in your, your law. I already, it's already said you are God's, okay? <laughs> so <clears throat> we try to put, uh, separate, and that's where we fall into trouble. That's why you don't see no power going on because we're trying to separate whole, you know, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and uh, God. No, they're one. They're one with us. Got that? Stop separating. Stop looking to the sky. He's in you. Okay? <laughs> Got that? Start practice looking, just talking to God like you're sitting here talking to another person. Okay, because he's in you. He hears you. He made your ears. He made your mouth. He made everything that you got, you know, 
You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you with, he knit you together while you was in your mother's womb. He knows everything already. Y'all got that? Oh, here we go again. I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself, okay? <laughs> and we see Psalms 82, 6, what it say, uh, Lego Big? Okay, is that the blue side? Yes. With the blue we writing. We are God. Psalms 82, 6, yeah. And John, read, read the other side for me, Lego Big John 10, 34. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. This is God answered. Is it not written in your law? I said you are God. Here you go. Jesus answered, okay? Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. <laughs> you see in the scriptures it says. In John 10, 34, Jesus answered them, it is, is it not written in your law? I said, Jesus answered and said, I said, you are God's. All right. Awesome. I bet you with that part, the Pharisees were really confused when Jesus said that <laughs> I said you are God. Oh, yeah. They probably thought it was blasphemy. You hear mm -hmm. that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Come here, Lonnie. Turn the channel for him. For him. Uh, so let me go to the next one. So <clears throat> how can I have the mind of Christ? And then the one across from it says, no, we should go to the one down here. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Not just your mind, but in the spirit of your mind. So you got to know how to read the scriptures, read them slow, don't read them all fast because you're going to miss something. Let spirits speak to you and show you some things, enlighten you. Um, Lionel, I, I said come here. Um, and then the one up the top, it says, oh, how else, uh, how can I have uh, the mind of Christ? Philippians 2, 5 tells us to let this mind here. Turn this, this channel on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, Jesus, which we said that already, right? So how do you let it? You got to renew your mind, the spirit of your mind. Renew the spirit and spend time in God's word and hear what the spirit is saying to you. The mind of Christ through the spirit, we have the mind of Christ. Got it? So how can you have the mind of Christ? Through the spirit, we have the mind of Christ. Is that clear? And somebody tell me why through the spirit? Give me a, you know, you know, put on your thinking cap for a minute. Tell me why through the spirit we have the mind of Christ. So we can think like God. Yeah, that's a good one. Very good. And Anybody? Go ahead. And kind of like act like God, like creating something. Yeah. Like, like if you want to, you can like co create a planet. Yeah. I think, I think you can. Yeah, you can do anything, you know, you put your mind to. I'm technically creating my own world anyways. Right. So I'm technically doing that. <laughs> you do that with your mind too. A lot of people are in their own mind is in, in another world. So a lot of, you know. So... Uh, but you need to be your your mind needs to be renewed in the spirit of uh, your spirit of your mind needs to be renewed so that you will be have the mind of Christ through the spirit. And so what's another reason why through the spirit we have the mind of Christ. That was good. Um, Lego B. Anybody else can think of something else. Isn't it because we're the same. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> very good <laughs> very good candy's world yes because you are spirit beings you're made in the image in the likeness of him y'all got that that's why it's through the spirit we have the mind of christ so this is saying almost the same thing but i'm gonna read the other side 
uh, put on the new self. I'm okay, this has a little bit of something different here. You want to read that, Brother Thomas? Both sides. We still got Brother Thomas with us? Yeah, yes, please. You said. Okay. Can you read both sides? Okay. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self which is which in the likeness of god and has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth awesome that's saying a whole lot right there well well that's a whole <laughs> a lot of good stuff for us so we so you... we we be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self which is which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Mm. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let the spirit, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Put on your new nature, created to be like God. Wow. A truly righteous and holy. Amen. 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 So it's not just renewing your mind. Y'all see all the other adjectives. Okay. The action words. Okay. So mm. when you renew your mind in the spirit, there's some, uh, something else you need to be doing with that. And you're putting on your new self, which is, you know, God's word is God's thoughts. So when you do what the word is saying, you're doing that which is in the likeness of God. Okay. And then you see the other side talks about the spirit. Renew, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. So it's not just renewing your mind, it's your thoughts, it's your attitudes. And then it says, put on the new nature, create it to be like God. My, my, my. Wow. Right? Truly righteousness and holiness. Awesome. So here's another thing, because this is where. Everything is, your mindset is everything. So wherever your mindset is, that's everything. You're going to see that in a little bit. I'm, not, I'm running out of time, too. <clears throat> so let me, read, let me read what I had. You have the mindset of Christ. You can never understand his mind by studying. It is, by studying, it is as one who is separated from him. So you can't study God's word. And know and and understand his mindset. If uh, if you're separated from him, remember we talked to other scripture. The scripture says, "He that is um, that is joined to the Lord is one spirit." So if you're not joined to the Lord, trying to study, uh, study his mind, trying to study of uh, Christ, the mindset of Christ, it's not going to work. Okay, yeah. so that's not going to work. You can never understand his mind by studying it if you are separated from him. So we talked about being one, the power of oneness. And so you can't do that if you're not with him. You're not going to understand. Him. It's going to be like foolishness to you. So you can only know God's mind by understanding your oneness with him in the spirit. That is so true. So uh, I'm gonna go past this here one, but this one was pretty good when I was reading this. This is in cursive and it's very small, so I'm gonna read it. The mind of Christ. Now may you always have the mind of Christ who shows us how to live in love's embrace. That love be willing to be sacrificed. And then no matter what be full of grace. He was the perfect pattern, free from sin, a humble servant with a heart of, to give, obedient to God through thick and thin, and even unto death, choose to forgive. The mind of Christ is constantly in prayer, submitting to the will of Abba God, unbroken intercession to repair. The brokenness of man which sin has flawed, 
Think only of those things that love, think only of those things that love sufficed. Yes, may you always have the mind of Christ. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's saying a lot, but I thought it was awesome. <clears throat> and so this is how some of the ways we demonstrate of um, when it talks about who show us how to live in love's embrace. That's powerful right there. If you don't have that embrace, you won't be able to do the rest of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the mind of Christ. So say what you can say over here with me, everybody on count of three in the blue. One, two, you ready, Lonnie? You ready, Lonnie? Now, now, you with me? Gotta watch that guy. <laughs> all right. So we can all say this on the count of three. One, two, three. I, I have the mind, mind of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Yes. Money must be in it with Bashad. So I have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And so we must renew our minds to continue to be in there. All right. I'm going to stop here. So what did y'all get so far? Mm. Well, what I got, you know, your smile is contagious. Like Cont contagious. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, with someone, you know, you know, who has a confidence they got it, but if they flip it around, if, if you like smile around, they will catch it and they will smile and they get some catch it and everyone will have a smile and, and <laughs> say Walmart. Right. <laughs> awesome. But awesome. It's, not, it's not a bad contagious thing. It's a good one. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it was good. As we, uh, I think Brother one, Thomas Uriah. missed that. <laughs> say that again. What'd you say, Candy Swirl? Well, I was saying that was good, Uriah, for, for his analogy, because I just when he was talking about the smiles, I got that Walmart happy smile. <laughs> right. <laughs> <In my Yeah. brain. laughs> That's creative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. on, on my side, well, other than uh, I can agree with, with uh, the smile being contagious. And uh -huh. it's even correct, too, is that um, if you can take a look, I just got in my head where if you take a look at two characters where you can have one where they look all either one could be a frowny and the other one's more the other one could be bubbly which one would be more drawn to the one that's sad or grumpy or the other one that's just all bubbly and cheerful i'm pretty <laughs> right. sure you most likely go for the cheerful one <laughs> right absolutely and that's the the one that's approachable we talked mm -hmm. about that yesterday being approachable yeah and so if you frown anybody approachable i'm like oh that person that person mad i ain't going over there <laughs> 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 yeah, I can see that because especially with the cartoons and stuff, when I see different characters where you know there's a lot of people they gravitate towards the the more friendly type characters, but then when you got the ones that are angry or sad or something, you're just like, mm, something's up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Make mm -hmm. a change of mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody get anything else today about you know the other than the smile? What else y'all get? Yeah, I think uh, that 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 is awesome, uh, lady, and what uh, you shared. So I think what I want to emphasize is about the power of one. Okay. Of one. And uh, I think Jesus made it so clear that, uh, that as as He and the Father is one, we also should be one. Uh -huh. And and oneness is something that uh, uh, we we all have to be. But I wanted us just to put it in the form of a question: How do we be one with one another? How do we do that? Well, that's a good question, right there. 
Yes, absolutely. Because I was while you were talking, this this scripture came up. Uh, believe me, or not. I mean, mm-hmm. believe me. But uh, <laughs> it says <laughs> the scripture says, uh, and Jesus said it too. He says, if your house is divided, mm-hmm. if you're divided, it's going to fall. You're going to fall. Yes. He also tells us to love one another, that exactly. others may know that we are His. Mm. So scriptures like that and, and I'm practicing uh, the uh, fruits of the spirit, um, becoming one, one, one another, loving on one another, that, that's the po- most powerful one of the fruit of the spirit. Because you have mm. to have love to have peace. You have to love to be uh, patient. You have to love to be gentle. You got to love all those things. And he tells mm. us in the scriptures to love one another, that others that will see us loving on one another would know that we are his. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know if they answered your question, but did it? Oh yeah, I think what you just said is, that is it, that is it. Be- because I, I don't think he can, he will ask us to do something we cannot do. I don't think he would do that. Because right. He said we should love one another because it's possible we can love one another. And, and, and it's possible for us to live by those I mean, fruit of the spirit so that we could be able to relate well with one another. So it's right. possible. It's possible. It's possible. And Absolutely. And we have to find a way to make it possible, even if we, we think it didn't work in a way, but we still have to make it work. <laughs> and it has to be in the spirit. It has to be in the yes. spirit room. Because I've seen many times over and over again in in churches where people all got the same outfit on. You know, they had to, everybody mm-hmm. was coordinated with the same, but everybody wasn't one. So you can have mm-hmm. the same stuff on, but it has to be in the spirit room. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, so therefore, I think the oneness actually should be in the purpose. In the purpose, maybe why they come together or why we all yes. want to. Yeah, that's perfect right there. The purpose, because the per all the purposes are connected. Yeah, they, they're connected. Yeah. Your your purpose can help me with my purpose. My purpose helps you with your purpose. You know, yeah. so you got to let go of pride and malicious uh, uh, attitudes and stuff. That's not of God. Mm. So mm. we have to live in the spirit realm and not live from the flesh. Yeah, yeah. You know, it tells us to put all, put away all those things and put on the new man. Yeah. And I know there's some people that won't do that, but, you know, as many as we can get, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's try to get as many as we can get, because some people are just meant not to do that. So you do the best you can. Sure. Excellent. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and also, you know, because sometimes... I mean, people try to put it up, but something's still not too real. <laughs> sometimes, so trying to relate with people. Sometimes, you, sometimes you have to put up some few characters, but sometimes it's not too real. And sometimes you you are you are just tired of trying to <laughs> relate with one another. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because it's, it's a, I think it's a scripture that talks about being um long suffering. Long suffering mm. is one of the fruits of the spirit. You have to have the love of God to be mm. long suffering with people because some people are weaker than others. And, you know, everybody not on the same spiritual level. And you, you got to wait for some people to catch up and you got to be gentle with um, when you're teaching people who are just rebellious and, and all those things because everybody not on the same level. So you definitely got to be walking in the spirit to be doing this because you couldn't do that in your own on your own on your own yeah you yeah. couldn't do that on your own because you, you're gonna you know you're gonna be like a moses and hit the hit the rock <laughs> okay you're gonna hit the rock and miss out on something you know they hit the rock instead of doing what god said okay mm-hmm. so it's learning about how people need to learn other people's gifts and see, people don't understand other people's gifts. That's another reason that causes division. People don't want, they're not learning, trying to learn what other people's gifts are. And so they don't understand how they operate. And so they take that in offense. 
So, you know, just a little deep conversation right here. But anyway, <laughs> like, but that's the, we're talking about oneness amongst ourselves. So, and that's, that's one of the ways you have to study. You have to study and, 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 and understand how people's gifts are operating, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and I think also it, it, that sometimes we, we, we have to also uh, ensure that, I mean, if we are not like somebody, uh, it doesn't mean uh, they are not relevant. And, and right. that, that is what uh, sometimes people are not too, I mean, tolerant because they are not like somebody <laughs> that is not important. And I think this is one of the things we studied uh, not too long ago that uh, everybody is important. Maybe you may not be functioning in this way, right that does not mean what the way other others are functioning are not needed. it's not needed exactly it, it is how we we have to appreciate that everything god created for us really matters to us and 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 that that is what we have to get to to the point to to know yes yeah and, and before i go i i i, I pass it on one thing also that you said is about being like God. We are like God. Mm -hmm. as, as, as you, when you when you were teaching, there's this scripture that came to my mind that in Second Peter, okay, Peter, chapter one, verse three to four, something. It said that mm -hmm. God He has given us everything we need for life <laughs> and godliness. Yes, <laughs> I said that earlier. I don't know if you was here, but here you go. You brought, you brought it back around, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it's in my notes somewhere too, but I got too many notes, so I have to stop somewhere, okay? <laughs> yes, but that is powerful right there because that's in my notes, but I just didn't get to it. And so yeah. that's how the Holy Spirit don't brought it around anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and I was so much, I mean, that scripture really got me so much as we are going through this because he said that all these things here, to, but we we have to get these things of the knowledge of him when we are having the knowledge of him. Right. Then we could be able to, I mean, uh, function. Uh, like that. Yeah. So, so that, that is one of the things that, yeah, we have, but our thoughts have to make sure that we are in align with God also. Yes, that's perfect right there. Your thoughts need to be in alignment with Him. So yeah. if your thoughts are in alignment with Him, you get this knowledge of God because this is not yeah. the knowledge of good and evil. This is yeah. the knowledge that we're giving out here is the knowledge of God. So when you confront with people that's you know still want to you know separate God you ought to know that you are one with him they want to put him over here and, and Holy Spirit over there and God over there and up in the sky and all that but the Bible tells you that he, he's the kingdom of God is within you yeah it's within yeah. you he's yeah. in you and that's why we ought to live from our hearts because that's where the, we're, we're living from the spirit you gotta get your um your reference point is should be by the spirit. That's as great. many as led by the spirit, so are they are the sons of God. So when you live from your heart, you're being led by the spirit of God. You are the sons of God. I mean, you know, people say that, but it's a difference than living it and saying it. Mm, yeah. your, your mouth and your 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 life really a match up, and and that's when you start seeing power. Okay. Yeah. Because you're in alignment with God, His Word. He's not going to make. He's not going to embarrass you. He's going to show off. Matter of fact, He's going to show out because yeah. you're doing exactly what He wants to do in the earth through you. Through you, yeah. Through yeah. You. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it's seven fifty nine. Anybody have anything else? All hearts clear. Let me know. Yeah, all is clear. clear. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so uh, we get one of y'all to pray us out, okay? Okay. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. 
I was blessed everyone in this classroom to have a very good day. And also bless tomorrow by Karen to have a, a mm. good birthday. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And thank Don't you, Uriah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Them. When your birthday? Tomorrow? Yep. Oh, oh, happy birthday. All right. Birthday. All right. Well, happy- then most likely I got work tomorrow, but eh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, it's precious. Your purpose precious. Day. It's your purpose day. You were oh, born this yeah. day. It's a purpose. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I know. Uh, awesome, though. So uh, have a, enjoy your birthday. Yeah, Bless. I will. Yes. Enjoy. Enjoy to the fullest. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna say good night. See y'all next week. Uh, blessings, goodness. blessings, and much love. Thank y'all for being here. Mwah. Bye. 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 Okay. Now you can go. <laughs> okay. I figure out how to get out of here.